Hey my friends, I just wanted to give you a sneak peek before we even did anything so you could take a look at some of these beautiful crabs we're about to talk about. So here's the sneak peek, now let's get into it. Hello my friends, this is Alex Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. On this channel we always love to talk about the history of the aquarium hobby, but we also love to talk about where the hobby's going and new amazing freshwater ecology discoveries, biology, uh, physiology, physics, you name it. If it has to do with aquatics and it intersects with science, aquatics, history, and anthropology, we love to talk about it here. And so today is no exception. We have a really exciting episode where I'm going to show you over a dozen species of vivid, beautifully colored little nano-sized crabs that are perfect for the aquarium hobby or a nano vivarium, riparium, terrarium type setup. Anything you've seen Tanner do over on Serpa Designs, these crabs are waiting for him. They're just like the vampire crabs or the Thai micro crabs, pom pom crabs, just like that, only new and beautiful colors and found in a completely new place in a way that is history in itself. So let's talk about that story and take a look at these beautiful creatures. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, hit that like button, and it really helps spread the news about these awesome creatures and about this channel. Thank you so much, and let's take a look at these beautiful creatures. All right, friends, without further ado, here are nine of the new species of these Indian micro crabs. They're really, really beautiful looking and really, really cool. So there are around 1,300 species of freshwater crabs in the world. They're mostly distributed through around the tropics and subtropics, and they're divided into eight families. So now we can add at least a dozen more uh, to that list. Eleven were found uh, in this uh, series of expeditions, and I've got links that I'll attach to all of the uh, interesting uh, taxonomy uh, information. If you want to know the Latin names and where they were found, some of them are former uh, species like that were known in 2014, but now they've decided that they're in a new uh, species or there's not just color morphs or whatnot. But regardless, in this part of India alone, there are 120 species of freshwater crabs in 35 different genuses and two different families. And Kerala, or the Kerala region in the south, has 35 species uh, with the Maharashtra uh, region having 29 the Assam region, which is where pea puffers come from, having 21, and the Western Ghats of India, down in the southwestern uh, Goa area, having 17 genera and 58 species. So that's what we're looking at today, is the new ones that have been found there. We're going to start off by looking at a map of where exactly this is. So, uh, you know, I don't expect everyone to know where we're talking about today, right off the bat. But here is India, and within India, this southern area here is known as Goa. And if you go farther down, that's Kerala, and then down there you've got, uh, you've got uh, Sri Lanka. But along this whole area, there's a formation of mountains, and... In the central coast, or that Goa area, uh, there are a whole lot of interesting species living in the rivers and lakes there. So it's kind of been separated uh, from the rest of India, and a lot of Indian species are separated by what exists on the western tiny little sliver of coast that runs all the way down this entire chunk of India over several thousand miles 
and then what is in the rest of India over on this side. And then, of course, you've got the Himalayan stuff in the north. But right over here, a lot of our um, barbs and interesting little baddis and things like that come from these regions. And then a lot of uh, our favorite cryptocurrines and uh, aponagitans and other interesting plants also come from these regions, with the Ulaganandras known to come from both of these regions as well. They're both going to be tropical, with it being slightly more humid and hot in the south. And then uh, in the north, it gets a little more cool during the rainy season, but it's still going to be, uh, you know, 75 or 26 to 28 degrees Celsius, uh, something like that, uh, as your average hot day, even in the cold season. And then closer to something like 100 degrees plus on the hot days but these little blue dots all over this map this is where crab species that we just talked about the 125 that's where they are found so it's pretty amazing how they're distributed and they knew that they existed along these mountains and then out towards the sea but they seem to exist in these little tiny clusters and What's amazing is some of them are completely isolated from one another, and so they've evolved very differently from one another. So I want to read to you guys uh, some of the interesting uh, th things about some of these new crabs. Look at this one here. I think this one is just stinking adorable. Look at its little eyes. Uh, and as you look... They have kind of a similar look, a lot of the ones that they recently found, uh, but there are several genus that make them look um, slightly different because you've got, within each genus, you've got several different uh, looks. And uh, I apologize that we have to see random ads popping up places, but it's, it's because all of this is public information coming out of various institutions uh, in India, including like the Times of India and some of their university websites. But you can see here, some of them also have kind of earth tones and different uh, looks to them. But the main 12, as I like to call them, uh, were those colorful ones. And we'll look at those in just a minute again. But beyond those, we've got these kind of earth tone ones that have two colors. And these ones are completely different genus than the others this is that new genus that was discovered with those other 11s and they don't know for sure but it looks like there could be as many as 10 species within this genus and this is named uh in in latin basically it's a reference to sanskrit which m is the ancient language spoken in the region and written in the region that means uh it means two-tone or two-color and so all these have a specific claw setup and and color that's similar. And those ones and, and this one, those are all one group. And then if we hop back over to here, these ones which look similar, but if you notice, they're uh, more solid colored in some cases. But what's neat is that their their claws, even in with, within one species, when you look at various pictures of those species, they might have... Uh, oh, of course, they want you to uh, re restart right now. Um, they they have different color claws. So this one might pop up with a yellow claw if it loses a claw and regrows it. Uh, so each species has a lot of different possibilities for color morphs. And like I said, there's Latin names here that um, you can kind of see. But that I'll attach links if you guys want to read on the taxonomy. I'm assuming most of you just want to see the pretty crabs, which is what I wanted. So, let me tell you a little bit about the crazy story of how these crabs were discovered, these ones we're looking at here. So, out of all those crabs in India, you saw where they lived, so a team of scientists went out, and not to find crabs, but rather to find snakes. So they went out to India to go look for snakes, a team of grad students, and they ended up instead getting hit by a crazy round of monsoon rain. They had to hide in a uh, 
like crevasse or ravine and in these slot canyons while literally a foot of rain poured on them over the course of the morning and into the afternoon and while they were in this canyon they started to notice these little crabs and even though they were there to study reptiles and snakes and amphibians they were so enamored by these creatures that they took up the task of taking note of them that was in 2014 by a team of researchers comprised of uh, Samir Kumar Padi uh, of the Zoological Survey of India. Uh, and then there was the Rest Western Regional Center in Pune. Uh, and that was represented by uh, Tejas Thackeray. And then there's also the Thackeray Wildlife Foundation, which sent uh, Parasharam P. Uh, Banjertri and uh, Karan Taka uh, Goldick. Goldikrishna, uh, as well as Dr. Um, Karitna D. Hedge. So, sorry if I butchered your names, uh, grad students and professors, but uh, thank you for the work you're doing. So, out of those 120 species found in that western part of India, these are some new ones we can add. And they documented these cool crabs doing all sorts of different stuff while they watch them. But all of these species had either burrows or nests that they made. And they also laid uh, eggs, which they carried then under their carapace or un under their belly, which then hatched into fully developed or higher order breeding species, which means they're just like Neocaridina shrimp. And the babies come out fully formed like the adults, and then they go off on their own. But the mother and father take care of the nesting site for quite some time, a number of weeks, after the babies have hatched, which is really incredible for, you know, a crustacean or invertebrate of any sort. Uh, now, one other interesting thing is that they've been noted that they were eating... Uh, worms and kind of nematodes and little things off these wet rocks during the monsoon season but they also were eating a lot of arboreal leeches which apparently drove the team insane because there's literally blood-sucking leeches that usually prey on birds and other things but during the monsoon uh, when you're hiding in a slot canyon apparently they get all over you and cause problems and uh yeah, I mean, them being on me is a problem. And <laughs> they uh, noticed that the crabs were eating those as well as little worms and grubs and other little small insects in the area. So it's probably very likely that these could both be bred in captivity, no problem, like the vampire crabs from Indonesia or like the Thai micro crabs or the, Thai, or the uh, Taiwanese uh, crabs, the pom-pom crabs. Uh, so they're very similar in that sense. And we also find shrimp like uh, the babalti over towards India that end up being similar to the shrimp in those areas like Taiwan and Indonesia, Malaysia also. So it wouldn't be surprising if these also crossed over, evolutionarily speaking. So we already have a number of... Uh, crabs that you can already get uh, in our hobby in the United States. Now, if you're in Europe, you're probably thinking, well, of course we can get these, you know, no problem. But one of the best places to get them uh, that I know of and a place that I have worked with and trust pretty heavily is Aquatic Arts. And so if you go to aquaticarts.com, you can get the um, pom-pom crabs, you can get the Thai micro crabs, and you can get the vampire crabs, including the ones, uh, all the uh, Geocerama uh, varieties. And some of them look really similar, and they also uh, give birth to fully formed little young. Uh, they don't seem to exhibit as much care of the young, and they don't seem to be as tree-based, but they are both semi-aquatic, so they spend some time in the water, some out on uh, land or up on rocks or sticks or trees. And these guys are super affordable, and you can order them right now. So if you do want to order them, uh, there's always a code in my latest video. 
and it may change if you're watching this sometime other than uh, September 1st or August, uh, the last day of August. But uh, that code right now is secret 10 or secret 15. You can get 15% off if you want to buy any of these existing crabs. But I am really excited for these new crabs and I hope that Aquatic Arts or somebody will be able to import these soon uh, because they're really fascinating looking and the whole taking care of their young thing is a whole nother dimension that I think is super exciting for the hobby. Thanks again for watching you guys. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe and hit the little alert bell if you want more alerts. And if you want four episodes on all the discoveries in freshwater ecology every week, that's over 16 extra episodes a month that are audio based. It's only a buck 99 and you support this channel and freshwater ecology preservation and conservation. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye guys.